Welcome to the viewfinder on Adorama TV. My name is Marcin Lewandowski and today I will share with you some thoughts and ideas around motorsport photography. By looking at photographing motorsport from a perspective of someone that spent quite a bit of time at the track site, it's really worth asking the question, what are you trying to get out of it? Is it a professional career that you want to pursue? Or just a love for cars and racing in general? If it's a professional route that you want to chase, then you should start thinking about getting some sort of official body accreditation, but most of all, hone your business skills and selling skills. It's a photography business like any other, so being adept at finding clients and selling photographs is as important as the skills behind the camera. So let me jump to the fun part. If you happen to just love photography and things powered by internal combustion engines, then following your gut might be a rather enjoyable experience. It's true that standing on the side of a corner without a fence and spectators between your camera and the track can offer spectacular perspectives and alternative vantage points, usually without obstructions, but at the same time, it might put your creativity to sleep, especially at the beginning when it can become really overwhelming. You will be restricted to only certain parts of the track, often standing and waiting for hours in most remote parts of it. So let's get to the race day. Whether you have a media pass or not, come early or even very early and have a walk around looking for interesting perspectives. You will have most of the area to yourself. The morning is also the time when people, equipment, etc. will start arriving, especially at smaller meetings, providing interesting situations that might get lost in the crowds later in the day. It might be tricky to circle Nordschleife on foot, but if you scale down this thought process to stock cars or even speedway ovals, then finding an alternative perspective can be a fun challenge in itself. Additionally, if you don't thwart creativity by limiting yourself to where the race action takes place, then a whole new world will open. Instead of me trying to explain alternative approaches, have a look at a few of my photographs in this episode, and for example, Trent Parker's 2002 coverage of World Rally Car stages in Australia, or any Martin Parr's photos from F1 races. An additional alternative to race meetings, and very often a starting point, are car meetups. The proverbial kicking tires and chatting might give you interesting leads, and sometimes an extraordinary piece of machinery will show up as well. Saying all this, I assure you that I really like motorsport, and photographers like Darren Heth or Reiner Schlegelmisch were my early influence some 15 odd years ago. I always liked that motorsport can be presented in a very graphic or even abstract way. Darren had usage of high contrast and panic are exemplary. He mastered his very basic techniques almost to the limits and used his skills to photograph a highly photogenic topic. It's a beautiful match, but whether you look at F1 in Technicolor or Banger Racing in gritty black and white, it's always about your personal approach and having fun. If you can along the way convince people to buy photographs from you, all the better. Stay safe, whatever you do, and enjoy some internal combustion action while you can. Subscribe to our channel for more photography banter and check out the Adorama Learning Center for great tips, tutorials, and photography-related resources. You can also check me out at Sound of Photography on Instagram. This was Marcin Lewandowski for Drama TV. I'll see you again soon.